So I'm looking a little closer at the, the unit, and I think it's time to tackle the belts. The belts for the uh, little position indicator will be pretty simple. This belt's actually pretty simple. So I'm going to have a dog joining me back there. Let me see if I can find an appropriate Phillips to deal with these smaller Phillips here. Uh, and we'll see what all I can make happen here. That looks like it's probably a good size, I hope. No, nope, I think that's a little too small. Well, here is, I don't know where all my Phillips screwdrivers are. I should have located them before I hit record. So as we talked about earlier, this is the flywheel that goes through the mechanism to provide that pin, the capstan, which ultimately controls the speed of the tape. This nylon guy we're removing here uh, is what keeps it tensioned and it needs to be cleaned so it's got a whole lot of nastiness to it. Let me actually dump the screws in the case. That needs to be cleaned. Let's go ahead and walk the belt off. And so there's our first issue. Notice the natural shape that the belt's taken from being for, from sitting so long. So that, that alone is a problem. And then it's going to it's going to catch there and not want to rotate to begin with because of the kink. And if it does rotate, that kink doesn't pull all the way out, uh, and it'll cause a bit of, of uh, wow. And flutter as the mechanism runs and make it harder to actually get a good load. So that is an issue. We can see in the replacement belts that there's a belt here that's meant to replace it that is a whole lot smaller than this belt as well. So this is probably well stretched out. I may or may not be able to remove the caps and usually you can. I expected that to come out like it did and it did. This is going to let me be able to get in here and clean and lubricate, uh, which I need to be able to do. So cleaning and lubricating will help. That should just push back down through, sit back in place. But I am going to want to clean and lubricate. You can see all that whatever that is in there needs to be cleaned out. This belt and that belt will be easy. We've got the main drive belt already off. There's one more belt hidden in here. Well, the rubber wheels seem to be in good shape. I read online somebody saying that all his rubber wheels had dissolved. And at that point, that's kind of a lost mechanism. We will lubricate this. But the question becomes, can I get at this belt to replace it? And if so, how would I do so? The belt that's in there feels like it's probably okay. It looks to me like this wheel is the one that would need to be released. We can see the belt on top here. I just don't see a way only way I can see to replace that belt is to re release this spring tension. Let's see if I can get it to release. Uh, it's actually coming in from underneath. It's going to make that kind of interesting to release. So 
does this come off? So there's a nylon ring here that is not part of the mechanism that's moving here. But I'm not sure how that's held on. It doesn't seem to rotate. It certainly doesn't appear to be threaded on there. Definitely feel like a plastic pin. I honestly don't think I'm going to be able to replace that belt without tearing much deeper into the mechanism, and I don't really want to do that. I don't think I need to. Uh, the most critical belt is going to be this one, honestly, because it's always got to transfer power, whether it's fast forwarding or rewinding. So the big belt is really the critical one. We'll worry about it in a bit. This is the one that I don't think I can replace. There's two here. Hmm. belt is that supposed to be? Is it this guy? Let's see if the twist in it will release on its own and it looks to me like it did. And then we have the small one under here. Looks like it gets replaced with this. Let's do it this way. And that really is the drive for the tape counter. These ones that are oval shaped are oval shaped because they have come off and haven't been used for a long time. They are trash. Uh, I need to clean this. I've got some, oops, dropping stuff. Some very light, it's actually clock oil. It's very light machine oil. Here that I'll use for these metal pieces, you know, the brass, etc. I've got some silicon lube. To look for it. I've got some white lithium grease that I may use on a few of the moving parts in here since this will be safe on the plastic. Um, this oil shouldn't dissolve plastic but some oils will attack plastic. So really I'm going to step away I'm going to do some cleaning. There's a little bit of cleaning to be done in here not much. That certainly needs to be cleaned. Uh, we'll put this thing back together and see if it will fast forward and rewind. So I'll come back when I've got that much done. So I've done a bit of cleaning. Uh, I'm going to start to put some of the bits and pieces back together here. I'm going to use some of this very light clock oil for the brass and steel parts of the capstan flywheel. There's a brass race in there that this drops down into. I will use a little bit of the silicon or the uh, white lithium grease in other places. So let me get this put together. See, I know 
that releases. Let's see if I can get a drop down in there. Yep. Very small amount, but it did drop. We did get a drop down in there. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit on here as well. That should drop in now and just spin. Now I think it's pushing up against a rubber roller at the moment. No, it's not. Oh yeah, there's this rubber roller over here. Let me release that. And it should spin pretty freely. And it does. We then have the capture arm here that holds it in place and square. That nib runs in that hole there and I'm going to use some lithium grease in this case to give that a bit of lubrication. small screws here which lock that in place I did turn backwards there felt it fall into the original uh, threads the problem with mixing all the screws together is sometimes it makes it hard to find the one you want this loose it should still spin pretty freely and it does we need to get the spring back there that I took off earlier mm. great first. Lots of moving pieces here, and there's lots of spots where it looked like there was lubrication at one time. And I'm back in this mess again where the lithium has separated a little bit. And the tube, and I'm just going to throw away a little bit of it there. Gonna hit some of the spots where I can see plastic kind of moving against plastic. I don't know if this is gonna do any good. I don't know that it's gonna hurt anything. There's a lot of spots here that this may or may not help on.
whole lot of places to actually get this in here. Did you have you caught here what I did wrong? I certainly noticed what I did wrong here. Won't be hard to fix, but I definitely did something wrong. The uh, crossbar here needs to be off for the belt to be put on. Um, this again emphasizes why you turn the screws backwards to get them started. start down there so one of the things I've noticed is the motor the rubber has kind of given out here underneath these front edges and the motors kind of tilted forward a little bit that lithium grease that got on there and so that's not as optimum as I might like. But looking at it, I couldn't see a way. You know, I could probably find replacement rubber bushings and replace that, but I looked at it and it was kind of like, you know, it's tilted. It's not tilted very much. I think it'll be okay. That would be fast forward, I believe. Rewind. And I can certainly, I can see the wheels here turning now. Rewind is catching and turning just fine. Fast forward. Catching and turning just fine. It should slip a bit, and it does. Play engages up against the capstan here and catches as it should. Probably not much more I can do with this mechanism besides those three belts, the little tiny bit of lubrication, and some reassembly. Uh, well, the case pieces are downstairs. Uh, I, I washed them. They look a lot nicer. They're drying. So uh, I think we'll pick up getting everything back in the case and assembled in the next video. Let me uh, get this put away. If I don't put it away, I will lose it. They'll get separated, and it'll be impossible to find. And this very fine oil. It so the reason the special clock oil is it doesn't gum up. Uh, three in one oil like this here will gum up over time. It gets thicker over time. Uh, as the solvents in it evaporate out and this really doesn't do that so you know this is meant to be in a clock for a long period of time and stay lubricated you know stay a lubricant not get gummy which is why I'm trying to use that now in these kind of mechanisms uh, I can see a spot there that could be cleaned up a little bit this whole thing could have probably stood a tear down and complete cleaning but I don't know that I could actually get it back together the complete tear down. Wonder if those should see some lubrication. I would say those should. So let's put a little lubrication in there. So there's a nylon slide here that runs against that pin. Actually against a bunch of pins here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of lubrication on those. That's too much. Where those seem to engage. Don't think it's going to hurt.
seems okay. I know I keep saying I'm going to wrap it up here, but yeah, we'll come back in a future video and finish the reassembly. See you then.